right, we're gonna try this again. Hi everyone, I'm BU, community manager for Whitethorn Games, and we are here today to hang out with B from Princess Farmer. Um, so we're gonna meet the dev. B, would you introduce yourself again? Sure, I'm the programmer and writer for Princess Farmer at Samo B Games. Awesome. So, yesterday we talked, um, we, we played through the solo mode uh, on easy. I haven't played the hard mode yet, so I thought today we would bump up the difficulty a little bit. Um, Fun. Yeah, so we'll see where it goes from there. Um, is there any topics or anything you'd like to focus on today um, that maybe we didn't cover yesterday? Um, I'd love or... to see some questions from people and um, see what you are wondering about about the development. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So we'll kind of have like a, an open um, AMA today. So if that sounds good with everybody. Dusty, I hope you're doing good. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I still have my character from last time, it looks like. It saved it. Um, so let's see. What do you have to say? Good morning, Princess Farmer. I hope you are well rested. Oh, no, we're starting over. Okay. So uh, yesterday wasn't just a dream. Were you hoping it was? Uh, kinda, yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I do hope you can get the hang of this. There's a lot more to do. I think it's time for you to meet garlic. Ooh, garlic? Like the vegetable? Goodness me, no. And don't you tell her you said that. Garlic is a very good friend to everyone, furry or feathery. You'll probably be able to catch her in the forest. Off you go. All right, so, um, if you all are new here, uh, Princess Farmer is a match three meets, are you calling it a visual novel? Yeah, yeah, let's go with visual novel. Visual novel. How, speaking of that, it's always hard to know sometimes. How do you go about choosing terms and things you would like to use uh, to describe your game? Sometimes yeah, it's, uh, yeah, go ahead. So I was going to say, sometimes it seems like it's easy to pinpoint it, but other times it seems a little bit difficult. It is, um, Steam doesn't really have much of a category for this yet. Um, so we have decided to call ourselves a visual novel. We didn't before because we didn't think that we were going to be doing much of a story, but as we've been building it, we've been putting more and more story and dialogue and dialogue options in. So it's kind of felt like, yeah, let's just go with visual novel. Let's embrace it. And, um, so it is visual novel meets match three or vice versa. And uh, it just has little uh, match three games in between story and you just explore the world. So, yeah. Awesome. Nice. Did, uh, did you do much writing before you got into game development or did that kind of just come with the, oh, we want to add a story to the game? Um... For, you mean for this game, or uh, were you a writer? Just writing in general? Yeah, or did you do a lot of writing beforehand? <laughs> yeah, I I've always wanted to be a writer, and I kind of kept um, I, I kept really pushing myself to try to be a writer, and I've done all sorts of things. I've I've tried uh, screenplays, I've tried uh, short stories and books, and all sorts of stuff, and. I was really pushing for it, and then I just kind of realized that uh, <clears throat> writing isn't something that I want to focus on like all the time. It's fun as a as a side thing, mm -hmm. and this allows me to do it sometimes, and then program the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It keeps it broken it's up, perfect. and I guess interesting for you to do. And... Yeah. I, the the writing in this has been so adorable. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's really cute. I love how they get blushy and you have all these cute options. It just feels like, I don't know, it's, um, yeah, I don't know, they just fit, the writings fit the characters and the atmosphere really well. Oh, I'm glad, thanks. I have a real problem with walls of text kinds of games, like, um, I, I find visual novels a little bit difficult to get into because there is just so much reading to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I like the stories, and but, but it's just too, too overwhelming. So I, I wanted to keep this 
low key um, for reading and and story wise. I like how broken up it is, and I appreciate that too. I've played uh, um, not very many visual novels, but yeah, sometimes it it feels like you're sitting there for a long time, and you're like, I just want to break this up. <laughs> it's I've been reading for thirty yeah. minutes. Um, exactly. I, I think I said this um, last night in the Discord. The game really reminds me of games that you would play on like the NES because there would be just mm -hmm. short chunks of dialogue and then it would just progress the story along to where you were platforming or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's been really giving me those vibes, which I appreciate because me and my brother grew up playing, you know, co-op games, you know, and <laughs> sitting in the floor playing, yeah. our, playing our little games on our NES. And Dusty said <laughs> um, this was about picking a genre. It's simple, you take a dart, blindfold yourself, spin in a circle three times, and throw the dart. Whatever genre you land on is what your game is. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Close enough. Uh, I wish that Steam had, like, a magical girl um, oh. uh, category, because seriously, it's such a huge category of entertainment, so. Right, and I mean, Whitethorn, we love magical girl games, Starcross, Calico, like, we, we right. definitely want more of those. Exactly. Huh. And they don't have, they, they have family friendly but and relaxing, but they don't have, like, like cozy or wholesome or anything like that, so it's, uh, it's, it's been a little picky. Huh. I wonder wholesome would be such a good category. Yeah. I wonder if we could work with uh, Wholesome Games to petition for Steam to give us a category. <laughs> I think that would be a very brilliant idea. Yeah, that would be nice. Magical bunny girl category. <laughs> Straight to the point. <laughs> more more magical bunny girls. Um, yes. Be good. So, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your team and how many people are working on your game and what each um, each role entails? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I am the programmer and writer and business person and all sorts of other hats. Uh, and then my wife is the artist and game designer. And um, she also helps um, me balance my mental health sometimes. And, um, and then we also have Astra, um, who does the music and the sound effects and they're slowly um, building up the the sound effects in the game so there's some placeholder stuff in there right now but um, in the future they're just gonna have some wonderful um, sounds um, like in a menu right now the select and the back and the up and down are, are, they're just so adorable and I love them so much and um, the music um, especially when you go into the shop later on, that's my favorite music. So yeah, they're they're a, they're a fantastic person to be working with. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, did did you all know Astra before um, you got into this? I know a lot of it seems like a lot of indie games people are friends and they're like, hey, let's make a game together. Or did you all meet um, with the need of a, a music artist? Well, um, we've known Astra for a bit and. Um, you know, we'd already been working on uh, Princess Farmer for quite a while, um, and it, it it turned out that Astra does some fantastic music of you know blending uh, chip tunes and um, you know guitar and, and fun stuff like that, and so uh, it just kind of naturally happened that um, we asked them to help us out and they've just become more involved over this time and it's it's been fabulous that's awesome yeah the music the music fits perfectly i feel like that is such an important part of the experience yes. you have because it really sets the vibe and, and immerses you into the experience um if if some of these sound effects are placeholders they, they've done a good job i can't wait to hear what the polished sounds are going to be like yeah absolutely um we're kind of we'd like to aim for some of the you know the matching sound effects and the combos and stuff like that to um kind of go with the music so a little bit mm -hmm. yeah that'd be really cool yeah because uh, that has a lot to do with like how exciting your matches are too huh like the, the reward sounds yeah. you get yeah they were just saying that they would love to um 
uh, get some more flourishing flourish in there for like when it goes really wild. Nice. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Dusty, yeah, yeah. If they're placeholders, the blend's insane. So good. This this demo. It's just like this game's out already, right? Like, <laughs> you all did such a great job. Uh, it. It's we love to polish great. it as we build it, so, yeah. That's a neat way to go about development. I've noticed a lot of people do so many different types of development. Some people work on little bits, like, across the entire board, and it just slowly comes together at the end. And then mm. and then your approach to kind of polish as you go, I like that everybody can kind of work it um, with their own work style, I guess. Makes uh, yeah. things a little yeah, bit exactly. more enjoyable. Because um, I actually do homeschooling as well, and um, I'm also, uh, I have fibromyalgia, so like, I really have to pace myself and how much work I can do every day, and um, so this just works perfectly, C works on the art, and, um, and while I'm doing, you know, homeschooling and stuff. And then, um, and then I do the programming or business stuff or social media or whatever. So yeah, nice. nice. You you do you work on a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> I was homeschooled as well. That's really cool that you homeschooled. I loved it. Yeah, we just um, it, you know, because of COVID, it was just we didn't feel comfortable mm -hmm. um, sending them to school. Um, but then we found that while I was doing it, um, our kid was actually learning so much faster uh, when, than when they were in school. And oh, they're just wow. doing amazing now. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, us um, uh, neurodi neurodivergence, I think we all need to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> right, for sure. Um, I don't think I would have performed well in school either um i just got uh, diagnosed for adhd recently and i'm like i'm really glad that i was homeschooled because i, I did work in a way that made sense yeah. to me and it never felt like i was doing anything wrong because i would you know i'm gonna work on science for 30 minutes and then you know how about i do a little bit of math as long as i got done with my yeah. assignments it didn't matter like what order i did them in or you know i didn't have to sit for long yeah. periods of time um so i, I think that was a that ended up being a blessing for me too, um, to have that ability to shift when you needed to. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's just been great. We kind of started a whole point system recently, and it's going pretty well. And, you know, they get to earn bonus points, and then they get some um, Robux or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Little incentive to do well. I like it. Yeah. Um,. Are they interested in game development at all? Um, or is it like, oh, that's that's what my parents do, you know? Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up being interested in it because, um, uh, you know, they've, they've actually been doing a little bit, bit of, um, like, making um, units in pads or uh, building um, creatures and spore and they just they love to um, build stuff and they're really good at sculpting and, and stuff like that so I, I'm thinking you know when they are more comfortable with reading and and writing maybe I'll get them into doing some simple coding maybe some drag and drop and game maker or something that'd be super cool nice yeah. um yeah. Hmm. I guess there's probably all kinds of program. I mean, when I was a kid, we didn't have programming <laughs> for school. Um, yeah. So I guess there's probably all kinds of programs now to help teach teach kids to code yeah. and, and work on things. Like oh that. yeah. Start the first game making young game. <laughs> you can play your video game games when you're done coding. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm sorry, I, I think yeah, I interrupted you. That's, that's fine. Yeah, I actually did a game in Scratch when I was first learning. Um, eight years ago or something. Um, and uh, I'm thinking of getting them into Scratch to, to start. 
But again, mm -hmm. yeah, they just need to be more comfortable with readings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Dusty, um, what do you do? Dusty, are you a game developer? Are you just out around checking out some sweet uh, events and things going on on Steam? We're happy to have you here today. Dusty's a buddy. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Hi, Dusty. Is that Dusty? Or, is Dusty in the Discord? Maybe we've met. Uh, yeah, just joined. Oh, cool. 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 Do you uh, do you use any educational video games while while schooling? Um, yeah, we've tried a few. Um, and yeah, they, they like to do the math ones especially. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. They're just so they get so focused on certain ones that I, I really need to do some research to figure out other ones. I really wish Club Penguin still existed. I, I know I. <laughs> Could you tell me what Club Penguin was? I don't feel like I ever experienced Club Penguin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was um, just a world um, website uh, for kids to walk around and talk with each other in a safe environment and you know explore the world there. Um, and I'm mentioning all this about Club Penguin, by the way, because um, both he and I work there for Disney, and um, uh, she was in artist, a uh, team leader, uh, producer, and and then a game designer there, so. That sounds super cool. So yeah, and, was... and me, I was not a programmer, I was a recruitment coordinator, so. <laughs> is, that how, is that how you all met? Um, no, C and I have known each other for, we're going to be married for 20 years pretty, oh my pretty soon here. That's awesome, yeah. congratulations. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I um, do not feel as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> it goes by quick, it seems, as <laughs> as I'm discovering. Yeah. Yes, it really does. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I have the ability to adult very well, so. <laughs> it's, it's overrated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. <laughs> uh, Club Penguin, uh, so... It, it, kind of similar to maybe like a Neopets experience? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. I was but it was a lot more interaction between the kids. Um, that's entirely what it was about, was the social kind of aspect of it. Oh, and, that's interesting. And, and they had moderators that made it really safe and and uh, you know, kids always found a way, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they had I, smart I, moderators. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, no, I was, I was, you know, the kid on Neopets putting that I'm older than I am so I could access, like, messaging and stuff. <laughs> like, cool. uh, but, yeah, I had no idea about Club Penguin. That would have been really cool. Yeah. 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 It was a good experience. Do you think it influenced uh, your game developing now? Yeah, for sure. Um... Definitely, we we like cozy, we like family friendly, we like um, just really positive experiences, and um, yeah, and the, you know, just having a safe experience for, for kids as well is really cool. Um, not that they can, you know, pat in this game or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's still... Plus, you know, C learned so much about production while he was there that, yeah, we wouldn't be able to do this without that experience. That's cool. I always enjoy when I, like, had a past job that, in like, influenced, like, my future job that I have. It's like, oh, I didn't think I would ever use this again, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I have such a varied uh, history I even went to jewelry school and learned gemology there and I would love to one day um, put you know my knowledge of gems in a game or um, or metals that would be really cool um, yeah. and then my knowledge of veggies into this game which is really cool 
So Princess Farmer 2 will be uh, in the caverns and <laughs> looking for <laughs> gems. <laughs> Mining for gems, yeah. The gem game would be really cool though because like I don't know very much about gems and I feel like yeah, I, don't, I like games that have like slight uh, information, like like real information alongside mm -hmm. fun. It's like, oh, I learned- Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, like, what a daikon radish was. <laughs> so, yeah! Stuff like that is really nice. Oh, if, I love daikon radish. <laughs> if you all haven't been following Samobi Games on Twitter, speaking of radishes, um, they have been doing fun veggie facts and things uh, here and there, and we're learning about all kinds of different uh, garlic and, and the radishes and different species of plants. It's been really fun. Little yeah. tidbits of information in my doom scrolling on Twitter. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jesse, yes, truly outrageous. I love Jem. <laughs> Did you watch that other bee? Um. Oh, uh, the righteous Jim. Uh, Jim. Jim. No, I did not. I have not. Yeah, you're cute, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they did a movie while I was working in the movie theater, though, like this live action movie oh about. Goodness. Yeah, I didn't watch it then either. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's, it was all that. I don't know. I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really hear much about it when it came out, so. I don't think we had it very long. But I don't, I don't know. So right now I'm playing the, the stage with the, the bonus side that I learned about. I'm trying to follow the bonus around so I get all my points. Oh, yes. Sometimes my feed uh, misses what you're doing, so just so... <laughs> but I can see, yes, you're in the bonus one now. It's hard with the streams having like these long delays and things like that. Right. So I know we're a ways out from launch. Um, yeah. What are you most excited about coming up? Um, I don't know with the development you're working on. Is there anything like exciting festivals coming up? Are you just excited to try to get to the launch date? <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for launch. I'm um, really. Uh, I just love. Like I don't know the whole story yet. Um, I'm I'm learning it as I build the game, and I'm. That's actually what I'm most looking forward to, is for writing the dialogue for the story that C has, has uh, imagined up for this, so, yeah. Oh, cool. So, so when you all are working on the storyline, so one of you primarily comes up with the ideas for it and then one writes, or...? Yeah, I do the dialogue and um, she does the, uh, the, the main overarching story, which is in episodes. Like, right now you're playing episode two. And um, we're all sort of bouncing around between episodes. Um, I'm just finishing up episode five right now, and then I think I'm going to four, and then uh, maybe one or three. But I don't, I don't know exactly how many episodes we're going to end up with um, um, right now. Plus, you know, you never know. There might be bonus episodes that are released later. Um, who knows? Oh, that'd be cool. Nice. That's really good. Yeah, I feel. Um, do you have a? Do you all have trouble trying not to make the project too big? Like. Uh huh. I, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I I feel like it'd be like, well, we want to add this, this, and this, but then you're like, oh no, we've got to get this game out. <laughs> that's yeah. Gonna that's make development exactly. another year. Yeah. The the good thing is that. Um, uh, we we're getting faster as development is going because you know uh, C has learned exactly what kind of um, how uh, how wh what layers to do for the art and uh, just doing everything faster that way and I've got this whole system of how the episodes work how the rooms work with landmarks and levels and it's a it's a pretty great system where I can just drop in the new information and then all of a sudden we can play the uh, the episode. It's really great. So um, it's it's gonna go faster as time goes on mm -hmm. as long as Steve stops adding fancy things. 
<laughs> which he has been known to do. <laughs> but that, that, Wait, that, also <laughs> we need it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Dusty's asking how big the boards wind up getting. Um, I can't. I I can't remember what the max size is. Um, but we haven't done a level with a max size yet. Just because we find that um, if you have a bigger board, it just the matches happen too easily. Mm -hmm. And then if we have a big board and we have to add a whole bunch of types of veggies, it, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just you, you kind of find that you want to just stay in one area anyways. Um, and, and that's why these uh, bonus boards um, make a lot of sense because... Usually you're only focusing on a few columns at any one time. At least I do. that's how mm -hmm. I play. So, yeah. Hmm. But like, for example, for the fanciness that uh, the uh, tea comes up with, um, there was this... Uh, there's a level in um, episode 5 with a boss and I remember months ago asking her, okay, are you ever going to want the, um, like a, a, a different Y position for a, a, like a boss side board, like so that it's higher on the screen and, and the, um, the, uh, the player would be lower on the screen and she said oh no no i don't think i'll ever do that so then she did that recently and <laughs> <laughs> so it took a whole lot of work to code it and um like it's just basically everything in the game was referencing the, the y position of um, where the board starts so it was just a lot of work a lot of testing to make sure it works and uh uh, but it was it was a fun challenge. I I like her challenges, even though it's like I asked you if this was going to happen. <laughs> I tried to plan ahead. <laughs> exactly. Oh well, I hope so. I now, hope it ended up being worth it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's cool. It's a really cool level. Um, so now when I ask her those questions, I usually just am going to assume that she's going to want to do it at some point anyway. So <laughs> you sound it sounds like you predicted it. Yeah, yeah. Trust your gut. Yeah. Oh. I was ad an administrative assistant for many, many years, and that's one of the uh, key qualities of being an admin assistant is predicting what your boss is going to want, um, regardless of what they say they want. <laughs> Interesting. I probably wouldn't be too, too good at that one. I, I don't even know what I need before I need to do anything. Well, well, I See, need now to I can predict other people. No, <laughs> not you. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's a special power, but only yeah. for other people. Gotcha. Yes, exactly. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I just got a whole bunch of matches. Yay! Yay! It's going. <laughs> I think I think Dusty called it the match three dopamine. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying in the last um, stream, you know. I, I feel like I played the the OG uh, match three game when it first came out, the Bejeweled, mm -hmm. and uh, I do not remember match three existing before that, but it probably did. And uh, everybody in the office was addicted to it. And we all compared high scores and stuff. <laughs> nice. Did you? Who who in the office was like the the dominating high score winner? <laughs> I think it was uh, a fella named Steve. I think I think he was the one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we'll have like uh, incentives at work. Like whoever gets the high scores this week. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do that when we get the new office. I'll have a I'll just set up like a game in the in the lounge room and be like, all right, high score this week, guys gets to <laughs> get free donuts or something. <laughs> nice. See, the thing I like about the design of Princess Farmer, um, as opposed to other Match 3 games, is that, you know, if you run out of matches, that doesn't really happen with this, because there's always, uh, you, you can pull up and throw down, and it brings more veggies to the top, and, um, it, 
so you just it feels like you're never losing this game um, even if you get the the lowest mark you still get some money that you can spend on hair dyes later so I, I like that a lot. I think that yeah. makes it more fun and accessible. Um, so yeah. More people, people who maybe don't game, children. Um, yeah, you just don't feel like you have to be in a, a super rush. Yeah. Okay, I'm playing the Miss Bear one. <laughs> this one's always hard because you gotta, you just gotta move. This is where I do mostly di diagonal stuff, I feel like. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she is so demanding. She needs, she needs radishes. Um, so, so I see the beets. We have the little red beets. What are the uh, the stripy turnip looking ones? Well, those are stripy beets, and that's kind of artistic license there, because stripy beets are actually they look like normal beets, pretty much on the outside, mm -hmm. and then they're stripy on the inside. But you know, they look cute. So they are cute. Every once in a while, no, I'm sorry, it's, it's once, it's happened, um, C tried to put cucumbers in as a veggie, and mm -hmm. I'm like, no, they are not an underground veggie, you cannot have cucumbers. <laughs> I renamed all of the, uh, all of the files, they're now green radishes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> That's cute. No, no earth cucumbers. <laughs> no, Only root vegetables. Not. Yes. So yeah, I try to keep things. <laughs> if they don't anger me, then yeah. <laughs> so stripy beets can stick. I, I like. It. They're cute. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's always an interesting topic, like when you're you're doing something that's. Um... Uh, where well, you have a creative license to change things up. And yeah. We were, yeah, talking about some character designs for one of the other games White Thorn is working on, and it's like, okay, so this is, this animal doesn't have this particular feature, but do we add it anyway because we can, or do we stick to, like, the natural behavior and, and look of the animal? <laughs> like, where do you, where do you decide to, to try to keep it accurate, and where do you, you can take, I guess, creative... Uh, decisions on it like that. Is it kind of uh, the decision is based on how many gamers you're going to enrage? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play some in the game just to make them angry. <laughs> uh, oh, just like um, I love the uh, Twitter posts that are like, you cannot put a waterfall in the game unless there is a hidden treasure behind it. Like it is not allowed. <laughs> And if you can't pet the dog, cool. yeah, that is important actually. That one, that one, that one, we can, you know, please yell at us, hold us accountable for not letting you pet the dog. Exactly. <laughs> if anyone is out there watching today, thank you all for being here, hanging out. If you have any questions, there's a little place where you can chat with us. There's a little show chat button. It's in little tiny font. Um, but you are more than welcome. We're live right now. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. What is behind the dog, though? <laughs> A waterfall, of course. <laughs> the only answer. <laughs> I feel like there was another one that people are like, no, this has to be in the game. What was it? I saw another one the other day. I really thought it was cute. Um... Maybe it'll come to me later. Yeah, we don't have any dogs in the game yet. Do you think a dog would fit in the game? I don't know. But maybe... I haven't really felt it yet, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe it's a no, a no dog game. There's already so many cute critters in the forest. <laughs> Who knows? That's the kid we had the waterfall. <laughs> yeah. Dusty, I think you've got a great game idea. Dogs and waterfalls. Wait, Dusty, go go get that uh, Twitter account right now. The Twitter handle. Can you pet the waterfall? 
It, it has to happen. <laughs> Ken, you got the waterfall. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a winner. <clears throat> oh, she wants to win. When you decided to make a game, did you have an audience in mind to begin with? Um, and who would you say your audience uh, currently is? Oh boy, um, any lovers of magical girl shows and, um, yeah, I think it's, it's really the magical girl audience that, that we're going for. Um, and, uh, basically that's kind of how it started and how it's still going, so, um, yeah, with, a. Uh, with this game, it's definitely magical girl and just relaxing because um, both C and I, we like to play puzzle games while we're winding down for the night. And it's just, uh, you know, we just want to give that experience. It's like, oh, I'm a magical princess farmer and just relaxing, playing puzzle game. I think, I think you definitely nailed it for sure. Are these are these the cucumbers? No, they're they're in the uh, they show up in the second boss. Oh, okay. I I really like that that even you as the game developer doesn't know where the story is quite going yet. I think that's super it's exciting. <laughs> I'm actually doing that on purpose. I'm sure that C could tell me where the story is going, but I'm like. No, 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 I don't want to know about you. <laughs> Secrets. I, I think I run into that problem occasionally with um, with our games. Like, I, sometimes I won't play the demos or beta tests. So I'm like, but yeah, yeah. I want my first playthrough to be, like, on stream. And I want to share it with people. And if I play it now, then it won't be, like, my first experience. And I just need to get it to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's really fun. I mean, it, it, it will mean that I'll have to go back and play. Tweak some dialogue because I need it to all fit together. But um, for now, it's just I'm I'm kind of enjoying uh, seeing where the story is taking us. So yeah. keeps it fun. Yeah. Aww. In the general, in a general that way direction. <laughs> it's finding its way. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you've run into um, independently in making video games? Well, um, I'm really bad at social media. I'm really bad at uh, PR. Like, I cannot sell art. Sell us. It's really, it's very, very difficult. Um, the other, other challenges, obviously, are in programming. Um, I'm self taught, and I don't have really many resources of like other people who know um principal, i'm sorry uh game maker all that well mm -hmm. so it's it's really me you know leaning on um tutorials and um a lot of udemy courses and stuff like that so it's um it, it that's been a challenge um plus having to go back and rewrite a bunch of code because I didn't know too much when I first started coding it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's been a lot of refactoring and it's made such a, for such a clean, um, good feeling experience when playing the match part of the game. So it sounds like it's hard to get like information that you need. Is there a lack of community among game developers to help each other navigate these different? Um... Well, I think the problem is mostly me <laughs> because um, you know I'm I'm a really shy person for one thing, mm -hmm. and for another thing, I I just feel it really intimidating to um, enter into a game. Uh, dev community where it is predominantly male and mm -hmm. predominantly people who just are so passionate and so knowledgeable 
that um, it's, it just it intimidates me. <laughs> I, I could understand that, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you always just feel like you're asking like a silly question that you should know sometimes, right? And I know, I know. You just don't want to ask. You're like, I guess I'll just figure it out myself. <laughs> don't... Yeah. Hmm. Like, um, to kind of illustrate an experience in my life where that's happened, um, you know, years ago when I was um, trying to make it as a, a, as a jeweler, um, I asked a question online and um i just got jumped by uh a bunch of people including a very famous jeweler no <laughs> yes oh no <laughs> they just were raging at me um because i was you know just a beginner and why should a beginner know how to do this and you should learn the hard way like all of us have done and uh you know school of hard knocks and all that sort of oh, nonsense like and a... gatekeeping yeah it sounds like a lot and... of gatekeeping oh yeah that was like three years ago yeah that's that's sad that it seems like you kind of get bullied out of the space like that i yeah, would i wouldn't want to yeah. i yeah i wouldn't want to want to ask any more questions if i got you know, how are you supposed to learn? That's why I'm here to to, to figure figure this out. Aww. Yeah, it's great. Well I hope that game the game industry is getting more friendly in those areas. Yeah. Yeah, um I see what's really cool about being in the game industry for me is that, you know, I started uh at Club Penguin, which was a very wonderful environment of people, and um, I felt that they were very inclusive and um, supportive, and um, yeah, so I haven't really been at, at one of these game industry places mm -hmm. where you hear about all the nonsense and all things happening, um, so that that's that's my own personal experience so right. um, yeah i feel i feel really good and i feel really great um within this the white thorn community it's quite wonderful thank you oh good i'm glad i we really want to make it a comfortable space uh to be for sure i want i want all our game developers to enjoy working with us because game development's stressful yeah. why make it why make it harder <laughs> exactly I think you would probably, out of the conferences to go to, I feel like GDC was a wonderful experience. Um, I, I, it wasn't my first conference, I'd been going to PAX, um, but it was my first like really just strong game development experience, and I went with Whitethorn, uh, we were showing, or the Bees Make Honey and a couple other games, and it was so fun being around all of our game developers like in person and we could chat and hang out but they um yeah. gdc had a lot of great gatherings that people were putting on uh there was like a women's and gaming uh gathering and and things like that where you got to meet a lot of other people um that have more in common with you and and uh who are looking to work together and make the the game industry a better place to to, to work in yeah, I feel like there's been a lot of organizations um, lately that have been getting more and more pu public is, um, that are for women, that are for uh, minorities, and for, um, you know, just a whole different people everywhere. And um, for the GDC, though, I will say... Um, Stuff like that, conferences, it's, it's a it's almost a form of gatekeeping just because of the sheer cost of going. Oh and gosh. Spending. Yeah, and, yeah, and the thing is, like, like that, the event for the women's gaming there was outside the event. Like, it, you, you didn't need a ticket to go if you were in the area. And yeah, it's just so expensive for people to actually get in. Like, you can still yeah. go to town and go to all these free gatherings. It'd be cool if the game industry could have something similar to that where everyone hosts these seminars and things, but make it accessible 
um, for everyone because like the outside events of GDC are, are just as valuable as things that they're holding on with their panels and things um, because we we went but yeah we didn't go to the um, we didn't have any of the, the bigger passes where you got to go to all the seminars and things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was still like, still a crazy trip. Yeah, and you have to travel and everything. Yeah, see, as a disabled fibromyalgia person, I would not have the, the body capability to be at a conference. Um, for, you know, because I, I can't really... Mm -hmm get around and do that sort of stuff for too long it's just too too much right on my body um and i am really hoping that um because of what's going on in the world right now that there is going to be more online and digital spaces um that you know people will be able to gather in and people will be able to share their stuff and uh, it's been really uh, fun being involved in some of this stuff like the steam festival and um some of the uh you know the mix next and all that kind of stuff those are they're really i really really appreciate that stuff it's really been fun yeah i've i've loved it <laughs> i've really enjoyed the online um cons and things and i think they're getting better i think the first ones maybe were yeah. a little rough and we're, we're learning yeah. what works and what doesn't but i i think you're right mm -hmm. i think now that we we've all focused on it a little bit more well maybe you know alongside these different conferences there'll be a, like a an online one to match it where you if you if you can't make it you can still attend and watch the conference and stuff like even if you have to pay like attend the the digital pax east but you still get access to like live streams from the different panels and things maybe pay a, a, a you know a fee to get on the website to experience those but I think that's a good. I think that's a great. I hope. I hope that becomes more of a thing. Yes, I mean, uh, I, I feel like um, the, the streaming industry has really grown too, because everyone's home and wanting to kind of feel like they're hanging out with people, and so you know, uh, watching um, <clears throat> Twitch channels and 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 stuff like that, and just hanging out with people, it's uh, it's it seems to be growing a lot. Yeah, I I love the streaming space um, a lot. Yeah. It's there's a lot of good people, especially people who play yeah. games like this. <laughs> like Cal Calica launched. It was like, oh man, like all of this like garbage on social media, and then we went to watch the live streams on Twitch, and everyone was just falling in love and having a good time. And I'm like, I'm just gonna live here now. <laughs> and I found so yeah, many every... just great streamers because of the game type they were playing. And I'm like, oh man, like I can't wait to see who plays Princess Farmer and who we're gonna meet through this. Cause I know, it's so cute. I know. I I feel I'm finding it a little bit hard to navigate Twitch to, to find these um, the <clears throat> the really fun nice streamers so i'm kind of depending on twitter so far to tell me so yeah t twitter is a good way to like kind of get in there i'll um i'll have to send you some of the streamers i've enjoyed lately that that will uh, yeah. I'll have to get you in touch with yeah because i'd really like to support them it's i love the um so as i i was a streamer before i ever got a job working in gaming um yeah and um I love the relationship between indie games and streamers because yeah. streamers need content to put out and they want to keep their viewers informed on all the cool latest games and game developers need streamers to advertise their game and get it out to, to, to the audience that they're looking for so people can enjoy them and they can continue to make cool games. Uh, it's just such a nice like back and forth kind of relationship. that. Very symbiotic, yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. It's so fun. It's super fun. Um, yeah. I remember like the first time I was playing an indie game, and I think it was Chariot, and uh, one of the devs came by, and I oh. just it felt like I met a celebrity. I'm just like streaming this game, and the person who made the game <laughs> came by, and it blew my mind. I'm just like, no way! Like, tell me all about this stuff. Like, I can't believe you're here. Or, like, in my stream, because I was just you know just a little streamer hanging out playing games, and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now that I've learned like how both sides of the industry works, it's it's been it's been an adventure. Oh, yeah, and if anybody listening ever streams 
Princess Farmer didn't let me know because I will pop in because uh, I love to do that. Yeah, please, please let us know. We want to watch, and and we're happy to like come answer questions and hang out too. So. Oh yeah, for sure. So I am just past Rose's shop. Oh, can we go backwards? Can I go back into the shop? We can. Yeah. We were talking about the music earlier, and I wanted to. Yes, that's yeah. my belief. I love, yeah, just like when you go out of the shop, it's like you've got your da -da, I'm out and about, we're going on an adventure, and then, yeah, you step into this environment, and it's like, oh, cool, it's like chill. It it almost feels like, you, you know, you feel the air conditioner come on, and you're just shopping <laughs> for your hair color. <laughs> I love it, that's so exactly right, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the, it's got a great atmosphere, for sure. It would be fun to take game scenes with the music that they have set to give you the vibe, but then like change that music and put with something that wouldn't make sense as much and show like sure. what the vibe changes like when you, you adjust the music type. Yeah, good point. Yeah. We were looking at uh, I, one of our games we were making. Um, we were doing a trailer for it and we watched it without the music and it was like, yeah, that's okay. But like, it, it, the sound wasn't edited for the beginning of the video and then it comes in later. And yeah, just like, the trailer went from kind of like, oh, this is cool, to like, oh wow, like, check this out, like the rain and the thunder and you've got this cool music in the background and it was like, that's, it's so, it changed it completely, like. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting to see. It's something you don't really notice though, I feel like when you're playing a game, Maybe you don't- you know the music's there, but you don't, like, notice it. I don't think everyone notices it quite, or, you know, know how important it is. My favorite game music ever, and possibly one of my favorite games, is, um, the, uh, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Oh my goodness. Really good? What kind of game yes. is it? What kind of game is it? It's like a strategy uh, thing where you're um, resource gathering and building up your your castle and your army. Um, but I played it so complete. Oh, it was two. It was two that I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> I play it probably differently than anybody else because I um, yeah. I would create my own levels where there was like this impossible enemy that was um, separating you and the other team mm -hmm. and then I would totally beef up my army and just gather everything to explore the entire area and then I'd go beat that enemy, and then I'd go beat the, the other side. And <laughs> so, I hated it when I wasn't expecting um, the other uh, side to, to come and get me before I was ready for them. <laughs> so yeah, I played it totally differently. <laughs> That's fun. But yeah, the music, it was very interesting because every there were different, um, you know, factions kind of thing. And each one had its own music, very opera sounding, and it was, and, and then it's wonderful music when you're walking around the world and each kind of um, ground type, like if it was grass or dirt or, or um, lava or whatever, it would be a totally different music. And I just, I, it was such, um, it, it really set the mood for the game. It was really fabulous. <clears throat> and the other one, that I'm almost embarrassed to admit about this uh -oh. is when <laughs> I listen to it while I'm working on our game, um, just because it's nostalgic for me. And I listen to a playthrough of the game Riven, the the, the sequel to Miss. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just, but... I don't know. It, it's my comfort game music. So, oh, yeah. that's that's wild. I yeah. just. 
I just picked up Mist and Riven. I bought like some package on Steam that I have all of them. And I, I mean to sit down and play through a bunch of them if I can. Cause it's weird. I I never played those when I was growing up, but I played other similar games. There was like a, a Titanic one I played and an Egyptian one. And I, I think I always meant to pick up Mist. I would see it like for my DS and stuff. And I'm like, man. That looks like exactly what I want to play, but I never picked it up. And yeah, it's still on my long list of games that I should have played already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. Riven was just my my feel good, comfy game. So I used to actually listen to it while I was um, working on jewelry. So that's probably why it's so comforting to me. <laughs> oh. Do you still um, play with? I mean, not play with. Do you still work with jewelry? I don't. I have the entire setup in our um, storage shed, and um, I had to quit because I got tendonitis in both my wrists, and it's very wrist-intensive work. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't find a way around it, no matter what I was doing. Aww. So, yeah, it, it was really sad that I had to give it up, but... Um, I, I feel like a lot of it might be actually useful at some point, you know, like if we make a, a game that involves homology or making jewelry or something like that. I'm, I would really love to do that so that um, I could revisit <laughs> that knowledge. Yeah, I, th I think that would be a wonderful way to use that. And I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm like, okay, so when's this jewelry game coming out? I haven't gotten my hands on Princess Farmer yet, but I'm ready for this next one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that would actually be amazing, yes. Princess Jeweler. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Does anyone out there have any- Oh! oh. <laughs> I was gonna ask if anyone had any questions, feel free to, to chime in. Um, yeah, ask your questions, and if you're enjoying the game, um, we appreciate your wish list greatly, so thank you all for supporting, and be sure you check out the yeah. demo if you haven't. Yeah. It's hot off the it, presses. It is, yeah, I don't think, uh, I mean, we, we had a, a demo a long time ago, but it was still when it was the, uh, the Game Boy style colors and, um, smaller, uh, screen size and um, not nearly as as deep gameplay so yeah how big how big is the demo just yes you're just about done here um, it's just after this sort of final boss battle that the episode ends yeah, it's just a single episode. Yeah, so usually Dusty with me talking a lot while playing, it's been taking me about an hour to get through, um, but you can probably finish it faster than that. I just talk a lot. <laughs> it actually depends on the um, difficulty level. If you're doing an easy difficulty level, it can be even 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Um, and then if you do the harder difficulty level, it usually takes a little bit longer. So it depends on what experience you want. Oh, I got you. It's it's six o'clock right now. Do you still have time, or would would you like us to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll try to hurry up and finish the demo. But if you need to stop early, just let me know. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh, I hate when I have a question and then I, I lose. Oh no! I was no, just no, there. <laughs> Oh, um, how how did you come to find out about Whitethorn? You know what? So I've been following Calico for a long time, um, back their Kickstarter and all that, and uh, you know, following uh, Kels on Twitter. Um, she's wonderful. So she's a kind of person. I love her chicken <laughs> post. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. And um, it wasn't actually until maybe it was even you who reached out and just said, hi, we should talk. And I'm like, oh, 
Who are you? So I looked in <laughs> into Whitethorn and I found all all good about it and uh, you know Matthew and all that and I just loved absolutely everything that I was reading uh, and uh, got so excited because actually C did not want a publisher at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's I, I kept asking her. Oh, we kind of need one. I have no idea how to PR this. And um, it wasn't until uh, you reached out that she actually felt like, oh, maybe there is a publisher with the right kind of qualities that we're looking for. And um, so, yeah, then I reached back out to you and started the conversation. And it took a while, but... Um, we were so excited the whole time so yeah that's that's so good to hear i don't usually get to work on too much of the the business side usually um they'll um they'll tell it they'll sh like matt will share like hey we had these pitches we like these games and then he has like a you know we, we talk about it and is this fit our brand do they hold our values like you know we, we look Aww. we really want to make sure that the games that we publish have a, a kind of a theme um, to them. You know, we want comfy, cozy. Yeah. We want inclusive titles. We want just, yeah, we want them to fit kind of a, uh, where people recognize it. Like, oh, it's a Whitethorn game. It's probably going to be cozy. It's yeah. going to be uh, relaxing. It's going to be uh, introspective. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this, I mean, this, this one obviously fits just perfectly. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that we have been able to connect. Then it's really cool. I know it's just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So I'm really, really, really happy, and I'm really happy with the the games I've seen you sign uh, on since. And it's just, I think it's going to go really well. I'm glad. Um, I see Dusty asking about how many art styles did the game go through. Well, it's um. You know, originally C wrote up some, or drew up some, um, concept stuff, and it was, it was really cute. It started as, um, you know, she was actually getting her animal friends to do the harvesting, and, um, and so she had some art with that, and they were so cute. And then when we were first doing the demo, <clears throat> We had it so that the veggies, how many veggies you harvested, like stripey beets or how many garlic, it would unlock a certain animal that would show up on your farm and the, that animal would just be there now. Um, but, uh, and that was when it was just like a few colors. It was pink and green and gray and um, it just... People wanted something more colorful and, and a little bit more detailed, so we ended up making it bigger, um, getting a bigger color palette, though it's still limited. And um, so that's what you're pretty much what you're seeing now. Um, but we didn't have it in an episode format yet. Uh, it was um, still just quick plays and um, still just unlocking um, animals and. Um, and then when people were playing it, they're like, I really want to know more about these characters. And that's when we started um, going, oh, we need a story for this. So um, that's when uh, C challenged me to make the, uh, the format that it is now. And it was really a fun challenge. You know, she gives me art for these big rooms, big wide rooms. And I had to figure out, you know, navigating from node to node and each node, there were, there were different node types. Sometimes it would be an interaction, sometimes it would be a level. So it's been really fun figuring out a system like the, 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 the building blocks to, um, building an episode. So, oh, you won. Yes. You made it. <laughs> the, the, the feed keeps cutting out. Yay. Nice. Yeah, because these, these rooms, so it's hard to explain what they look like. I wish I had a photo I could hold up. Basically, it's the entire level, like, laid out end to end, right? Because you're, you're going in a line, and they're mm -hmm. stitched together. Like, you see, like, a part of it, but then you go to the next scene, kind of. But it's, like, yeah, one it's, big landscape. Yeah, it, yeah so it's, it's one big room, 
and um, depending on the the node type, sometimes it'll just be a camera pan, sometimes it will be a level that will suddenly pan the camera, um, and and it will invisibly um, do a, a a room reload. So it's it's a a really fun system I feel and. Um, you know, might be usable in the future for, for other games. Who knows? Nice. We've made it! <laughs> yeah. yeah! Oh, I noticed today when you complete it with two players, both of their beds are in there. That's oh, cute. Like, I, I was like, oh, there's a I second bunny! <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. I love it. That's cute. I just said... Uh, Go ahead. Oh, because well, uh, I'm not up to date on your uh, screen here. What what were your results? Did you unlock um, anything new? No, I got BFFs with Guy again. Uh, Disillusion Darling. <laughs> on two of them. <laughs> this is cute. Yay! All right, we've made it to the end. Yes. Thank you again for... for for uh, help planning this event. It's been super fun playing the game, getting to chat with you, and learning just like so much more about what has gone into Princess Farmer. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. You're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs>